few months, we're gonna strap into America's first fully functional giant piloted robot to fight Karatas and try to not die. This canopy could get blasted to pieces or a giant robot fist could pummel straight through it. Or we could just suffer a traumatic brain injury when we hit the ground. Because of this, we're putting the Mark II through some scientific tests to see if our driver will survive this fight. How do you make sure your giant robot can take a cannonball to the face? Well, we don't have another gun, so we're just gonna rip its arm off and shoot it with that. We've made custom paint cannonballs that are designed to hit hard and blind our opponent. Now we need to make sure a pilot can survive them. You ready to go? <laughs> Let's do it. All this shooting and smashing looks great on camera, but unless we know what it does to a person, we haven't learned anything. That's why we've recruited this unpaid volunteer to sign a stack of waivers and agree to subject themselves to unreasonable G-forces. To give you some context, when you stand on the surface of Earth, you're always experiencing one G of force. A sneeze is about three Gs. A really intense impact of 100 Gs, like in football, can give you a concussion. Now, NASA tells us that over a slightly longer period of time, even 40 Gs can kill you. We can measure these Gs with these accelerometers on our volunteer. Oh my god, it's terrifying up here. Okay, Rob, side shift a tiny bit that way. Tiny bit this way. All right. I feel like I just lined up a crotch shot. Everybody ready? Three. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm pretty sure wow. it came out the top of the robot. That thing just blew straight through. <laughs> wow. Let's uh let's aim a little higher and see if it bounces off. Three, two, one. <laughs> wow. Was, uh... Oh, man. The results are in, and they don't look so great. According to our data, both impacts would have killed the pilot. Taking into account the Gs on the pilot and their duration, we calculated something called the head injury criterion. Now, a higher HIC value means a higher chance of injury or death. The second impact had an HIC value of over 4,500. That means instant death. And we know our cockpit wasn't built for this, but we didn't expect to die from paint. Isn't science great? How do you make sure your giant robot can take a punch? Well, we started with some calculations. Our worst case scenario is Mark II and Karatas driving towards each other at top speed while Karatas is throwing a punch. We don't have a Karatas to test with, but we got the next best thing. Karatas isn't the same as a wrecking ball. Karatas is much lighter and much faster. But the important thing is, the momentum of both collisions will be the same. Start her up. Five, four, three, two, one, go! Hell yeah! That was a good hit. <laughs> Got a little bit of tipping there. I definitely think we need some more speed, though. Damn! Oh! Oh, that was close. Dude, now it's <laughs> now it's getting dangerous. Oh! <laughs> the robot looks surprisingly stable. The good news is the punching data showed that those impacts were severe but survivable. The canopy took a beating, but it looks like our pilot's probably still alive. Now, the robot seems stable, but falling over with us inside is pretty much a worst case scenario. So we're gonna go ahead and try and knock it over and see what happens. It's 
so hard to tell where the tipping point is. Give it one more really good hit. One more time. Screw this, let's just flip this thing. This is dedicated to everyone who's ever called us unstable. <laughs> yeah! Woo! Here we go! There it is! There it is! Stay down! Holy crap, wow. I think all things considered, this, this looks like it's still in one piece. The canopy's a little bit screwed up and the shocks fell off and this hinge is busted up, but I think we're pretty good at building robots overall. I think that's true, but I think our pilot's pretty unhappy. <laughs> yeah. You know, both legs are broken. Maybe it's like a yoga pose or something. All right, let's go look at the data. Cool.